Venerable religious and dear parishioners, what is an angel? An angel is an entirely spiritual being. Right now, this chapel is filled with angels, very likely with thousands upon thousands of angels. We do have statues representing angels, but as we know, angels have no body. We make them with wings to represent their the velocity and rapidity with which they can travel. They travel at the speed of thought, not even the speed of light. Speed of light, that's way too slow for an angel. 186,000 miles per second. An angel goes with the speed of thought. An angel is not limited, such as we are, by all of the physical laws that pertain to a physical body. An angel is very powerful. We read in the Old Testament that God sent one angel, one angel, to wipe out an Assyrian army that was encamped against the chosen people of God. And in one night, one angel wiped out something like 180,000 soldiers. So do not underestimate ever the power of an angel. And remember, when the angels, the bad angels, rebelled against God and lost their goodness and their love, they did not lose their power and they did not lose their intelligence. They continue to keep them, but they are using them for evil. They're using their power and their intelligence against you and me. It is a chained power. It's limited. God chains them down. He doesn't allow them to use their power to their full extent. Otherwise, we'd see a lot more tragedies and, and terrible things happening. But again, God has given us our guardian angel. So right now, every one of us has our guardian angel. If we could only see what he looks like, his devotion, his love, his adoration. And after you receive Holy Communion, he will turn towards you and adore our Lord inside you because you are a living tabernacle for those 15 minutes or so. I'm reminded also of a verse from St. Paul's uh, letter to the Ephesians. I believe this is chapter 6, verse 12. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers and the rulers of this world. So when we look at the things we have to struggle against, the evil we are up against... Remember, it's ultimately not essentially a physical battle. It is essentially a spiritual battle. St. Paul just told us that. It's not who can have the better armaments, who can have the better weapons, who can have the better guns, who can have the better shields. It's not ultimately about that. It is a spiritual war, and you have to use spiritual weapons, offensive weapons, defensive weapons. And the angels are there to assist us. And who is at their head? The one whose name says, who is like unto God? Mikael. That's what it means. We say Michael. But every time we do so, we utter his battle cry. Who is like unto God? Nobody. Remember, the bad angels wanted to be like God. Or at least they did not want to be subject to God. And in doing so, they were saying, I want to be my own God. I want to do things my way. 
I want to live according to my standards. Who is like unto God? No one. And so God commanded, mandated St. Michael, and we, this is right in the apocalypse, commanded him to lead the battle. That battle we have no concept of. Yes, we have terrible images of war like nuclear weapons and, you know, fire bombing of cities and things like that. I mean, as terrible as they are and far-reaching, angelic warfare is far greater. Again, they're on a whole higher plane than we are. Again, remember the power of one angel. Remember their abilities. So God let, asked St. Michael to be the captain, and he'll always be the captain. We've listed in the bulletin the, the roles that God has given to St. Michael. You can see it there on page two. And we are just very grateful that this is the patron that we've been given. Also in the bulletin, we put the, the history. How did it happen that this would be St. Michael's Mount or you know, why was it named after him? Well, the early Jesuit missionaries will, will, will ascribe it to them. Either they were assigned or they were just praying to be inspired. What's a good saint for, to have as our patron right here? So as, you, as the uh, history tells us, it, the uh, original mission was up by Newport, Washington. But it kept being flooded out during the spring. So right here behind Mount St. Michael on Palmer Road, you owe it to yourself, by the way, to, to go on Palmer Road and to see the monument. There's, it's, it was erected in 1936. There's a monument that it tells about the history and that that was right there at the general location. It was a, there was at least three mission churches uh, the first two burned down. The third one was put on wheels and taken to Fort Wright College, and you can see that there to this day. But that's only the third one, not the original one that, uh, that was established here. Um, and for many years, uh, Father Cataldo was the superior. But right here behind the mount was the center of Jesuit operations for the whole Pacific Northwest. So we, this property, and Father Cataldo purchased it, it's been under St. Michael's wings, you might say, ever since. And with, with God's grace and blessing, it will always be uh, St. Michael the, being the special patron of, of, of this place. So a patron of our parish, our school, the convent, the rectory, what we do here. And as we see the forces of evil getting stronger and stronger and more deprivation going, uh, uh, not deprivation, but, um, but spiritual decay, going on. We're going to need St. Michael always more and more. And again, it's the spiritual battle, and it's a spiritual battle we have to fight in our daily lives. But by becoming saints, we are helping in the battle against the devil and against the forces of evil. We are positively promoting good. In order to promote good on the outside, we have to keep building it on the inside ourselves. I came across a quote, and it's ascribed to C.S. Lewis, some question whether he ever wrote it, but, but it, it gets across a wonderful point. And C.S. Lewis, again, not a Catholic, but he came a long ways, and he did say many things that can be very inspiring. And he said, he said, my prayer is that when I die, all hell will rejoice that I am out of the fight. 
In other words, I'm going to make things hard for the devil by growing in virtue and pleasing God daily in my own life and helping through my writings, my, 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 the letters that I write, anything I do, I am in a battle. I am a part of the battle against the devil, the forces of wickedness. Remember, he wrote that book, Screw Tape Letters, very insightful things about the battle, the struggle against, as St. Paul tells us, the principalities and powers. So even if C.S. Lewis didn't write that quote, it certainly sounds like something he could have written. And so I ask you today, will hell rejoice? so to speak, of course there's no rejoicing in hell, but will hell rejoice to see you gone from the battle? To you going on to your eternal reward. But you have to be part of that battle. You have to make things hard for the devil. You have to do those things that strike fear into the devil. What are those things? The devil fears and hates it when he sees the rosary in your hand. When he sees you frequenting the sacraments, when he sees you going to Holy Mass, when he sees you standing up for what's right, refusing to ever give that sin of scandal, never showing anybody how to commit sin, as we're reminded in today's uh, gospel. May that prayer be, become true in our case that the devil will be glad to see us gone, so to speak. But really, his battle will not be over because even in the next life, even more so, we can keep doing as God allows us. But the time of merit is now. Now is the time. Fight the fight. Remember who your patron is, your very special patron. Don't underestimate his power and the inspiration that he gives us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.